Uh, we've been talk, talking all these weeks uh, about how we need to grow, how the, we need to be connected with the Lord, what the Christian church has to look like. And this, to, this uh, Wednesday in our board meeting, we have one question to think about it, how we want the church, how the Christian church has to look like. How we can make different with other churches from other religions. What makes us so special or different? When someone says, uh, I am a Christian, what do you expect from that person when they said, I am a Christian? Because there is many people saying nowadays that they are believers, they are a Christian, but there has to be some kind of the values, some kind of characteristics that make that person who said that they are Christian has to look different than to anybody else. What we're going to look at the book of Colossians. Because Colossians, uh, Apostle Paul uh, set out all the standards for those who said that they are a Christian or they are a believers. And we're going to check today those three verses, three to six. And, but before, before we continue with those uh, Bible verses, I just want to read to you the lyrics of one of the songs written by Rene Gonzalez. Rene Gonzalez is a Puerto Rican pastor who also is a singer. Uh, and he wrote this song. He said, I want a church that gives me glory and seek union. I want a church to heal the wounded, bring chains free to the captives, to clear the mind to, those, to one who is confused and speak the truth. I want a church with, with its grace, give hope to the anguished soul. I want a church that heals the wound of the humanity. I want a flock where my ship feels safe and full of peace, where my word is your food, and I want to dwell there. I want a church that which is praise. Perfume my throne, me from the place, a church that knows how to make a difference between good and and bad. I think it Rene Gonzalez kneeled there in the, description, in the description of what will be the Christian church. It has to be genuine worship, constant preaching, compassion and love for others, and source of hope. I think if the church today we as a church, we as a Christian church, has and showed those components. We can say louder to our community that we are a Christian church because we have a, a true worship to the Lord. We preach in the gospel, and we have love for those who need the Lord, and we have hope in his resurrection. Paul wrote this letter about 60 or 62 years after Jesus Christ. And he wrote that, Lord, that letter to the Colossians just because he wanted to highlight some characteristics that they show as a Christians, but also to advise them for a lot wrong, false prophets, wrong doctrines that that day was very common and popular. Just like today, there is a lot of false doctrines that we can hear anywhere. Even today with the uh, internet, you just go to your computer, your, your phone, and you just can hear, see the title, we are Christian, and then they wrote whatever they want. It can be false doctrines. And then Paul, Paul saw that in the time of the Colossians too. The Colossians was uh, the part where we know today as a Turkey. Those, those places far away in the middle is the Turkey, is the, the Colossian church. And 
That was the purpose for the letter, to reaffirm their faith and prevent them for the false philosophies and false prophets that those Christians experience in that day. And we are experiencing those these days too. But let's see the first virtue that Paul saw in that church. And if you go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, that's what you can see here. said, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. And this is the way that he say thanks to the Lord, because we hear of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all God's people. See, uh, th that is important when we read this Bible verse because uh, the faith of those people was can hear it for Paul. Paul wasn't there in that community. Paul was in jail in Rome at that point when he was reading, uh, reading this letter. He was miles away from these people. He was in Italy, in Rome, and th they were in Turkey. There is a far away miles, in, even though they don't have a jet, they don't have a cart, they just walk or use any other kind of uh, transportation. But Paul there in Italy, he heard about the faith of those people in Colossians. That means those Christians there, they made it known to others. They were different than others. And that was, the news was traveling miles to miles to miles because they were the people, a community of people, of believers who decide, who decide in the middle of many philosophies to follow the true Jesus Christ. And they decide to believe in him. And they decide to live what he teach them to do. And that make them know. And they make know because they decide to love Jesus. And that was only, not only because they said, oh, I believe in Jesus. They take a step forward. And they move that Lord to Jesus, moving toward to other people. That love become from the cognitive knowledge to a practical doing of their faith. If they say, I love the Lord, and the Lord command me to love others, they start loving others and help them with their needs. The first need that they have was to hear the gospel, to hear about Jesus, to hear about the hope that we have in the Lord. And then he start working toward those people who need Jesus in their heart. And I believe that uh, 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 this kind of believer who the, the news uh, traveled far away, miles away from them, uh, is because they lived just yes, as the David, the king, wrote in Psalm 15. This is a wonderful description of what those who love the Lord, uh, 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 King David wrote it too here in Psalm 15. He said, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live in your holy mountain? The one who walks in blameless, who does what is righteous, who speak the truth from their heart, whose tongue uttered no slander, who does not run or to our neighbor and cast no slur to on others, who despise a vile, a vile person, but honor those who fear the Lord who keep an art even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lend money to the poor without interest, who does not accept brave against the innocent, whoever does these things will never be shaken. That will, ne that will be something important. If we practice these things that David said here, he said they never be shaken. We will be strong in our believer. We will be strong in our faith. And nothing can move us from the Lord if we keep alive like this. Honor the Lord. Fear to them. Telling the truth. Not changing our mind. Even if that hurt ourselves. But we are strong in our believers. And we see this. And we see the church in Colossians. There is some characteristic that we can highlight from there. F 
faith. That will be number one. Paul said, I hear about your faith and your love for others. Also, their constancy and hope in the resurrection. That were qualities, and not just in Colossians, but every church that Apostle Paul planted, they bear those kinds of fruit. They show the same Christians like life. They show their love for others. They show their faith. They were constantly, even in the middle of the persecution, because they have hope that one day they will see the Lord. Let's read what First uh, Thessalonians uh, said, 1-3. This is a different church, different city, different brothers in Christ. But also Paul said, uh, saw in the end the same characteristics. said, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. Because we hear about your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all God's people. Same, same characteristics from the Colossian church Paul is seeing here now in the Thessalonian church. That means those churches totally look different than other churches at that time. That is important. When we say the Real Connection Church is a Christian church, when we say the Real Connection Church is a church who wants to bring people to God through Jesus Christ, through their death, resurrection of Jesus Christ, we must, we must have to show others that we are a believer by our faith, by our love for them, because Jesus has to be in our heart and we have to present them him in everything that we do. This is what Paul, remember, said this is to Colossians, Colossians. We always thank the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, of the love of your have for God people. And God people is the, the lady and the gentleman sitting next to you is your wife and your husband as your son as your neighbor that is the god people here and when paul said this it, 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 that remind me what galatians chapter 6 9 and 10 says that we need to show that love first to the community of faith to our church, to our believers, our people here. Galatians chapter 6, 9 and 10 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. That's not important. I think that's important to highlight there. If you want to do good, we need to start practicing here between, well, among us as a believer. Yes, we're going out and help people out too. But first, you need to show that you love your family and the Lord. Those who uh, share the, the blood of Jesus Christ, that, that will be the first in the list that we're going to help. Those are the first and the least, and the least that we're going to pray for them. Those are the first in our list that we're going to worry and help them to keep their faith at the end. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 said this, For we are God, hands work. Hands work created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. And it is important uh, to highlight here that God make us to do a good hands work to help others. But remember that our doings is not helping, is not save us. It's not giving us uh, the way to, to heaven. We not gain heaven, the entrance of heaven, just because we are doing a good thing to others. And we are a good people. We're doing, we doing a good things because we love the Lord. And he's doing first to us and repaying to him, honor him, we do good things to others. We don't buy 
God's heart. We can. We couldn't. That's why Jesus died on the cross. But that death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and love God for us obligated us, commit us to do good things to others and live as a good person, as a good Christian, as a good believer. Because this church, Colossians, they know, they knew how Jesus did for them. And they live in the promise. And the promise that one day they will be with Jesus. Remember that this letter was written for them 60 or 62 years after the Jesus returned to his father. They never, many of them never saw Jesus. But they have faith in him because one believer take the steps, step forward. That Paul, Apostle Paul, Timothy, they went to them, traveled miles and miles to get to that city with the news of Jesus Christ. And they believed that message. And they believed that the Jesus Christ will return to the earth for them as a church. And they live in that promise. Just in the same way that we live in that promise. And we remind that promise today when we had the communion. When Apostle Paul says, every time that we're doing this, we remember that Jesus Christ is coming back to us. And the verse 4 and 5, and the Colossians says, we know, I just wanted you to read it with me. It says, we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love for you have for all people. And verse 5 said, The faith and love that spring from the hope is stored in you, heaven, and above which you have already heard, and the true message of the gospel. They love the Lord. They start loving others. And they start believing in the promise that Jesus returned because someone takes the step to preach the gospel to them. If Paul, Timothy, and all his uh, apostolic thing never go through them, we never wrote this letter. We never knew there were people that in Colossians who believed in the Lord. The gospel never being spread to those regions. If we never have people who take the courage to preach the gospel, we never been sitting here or myself standing here. That's, that's Bible verses remind us the duty that we must have to take in honor. It just, if we proclaim that we are a Christian church, we have the responsibility to spread the gospel, to bring the gospel for those who doesn't know the Lord yet. You know, the, the, the Christian church in the United States is not growing. It's not growing. And you see maybe some, some churches are growing in number, but they're not growing with known believers. What happened is people from, uh, from small churches going to other churches and moving around. Christians from one church move to another church. But they are not preaching the gospel. We just playing around. Just like those people playing with, the, you know, one cup and one little a stone at the bottom, moving around. We're moving around the believers, but we are not preaching the gospel to the lost. Maybe it's culture because people said, oh, I don't want to bother anybody else. Everyone can keep their faith or whatever they want in life. It's okay. But the gospel, the Christianity is not in that way. We should go. And preach on time and out of the time. We have to knock the door, not just waiting for people to knock our doors. We need to go out and preach the gospel. Because that's what the Lord wants. If we say that we are Christian, if we are believers, we should preach the gospel. 
That will be something weird when we get uh, to the Lord. I don't know if you are one month, one week, or 30 years, uh, or 50 years of a believer, but one day we are going to be uh, the, at the front of the Lord. And they will say, hey, Pastor Rodrigo, how are you? I know you, friend, your wound of your mother. Yes, what are you doing here? Well, Lord, I think I'm a Christian. I believe it. I believe in you. Oh, do you spread the gospel with someone? Do you tell somebody else that, you, uh, that I love them? Do you tell that I die for them? Oh, oh, oh Lord, uh, I was so busy. Uh, I don't want to bother anyone. Uh, you know, people say, the, don't, don't talk to me about religion. That's, that is a bad subject. It's something that I not should talk. Uh, that's why I didn't do it. Oh, I'm so sorry, but you cannot come. You cannot enter. Lord, but I, but, but I preach and, and, and I cast demons and everything. Yes, but I don't know you. You should preach the gospel. You should talk about what I did before. This is Romans chapter 8, 22 and 23. I know that it sounds radical, but that's what the Bible said. And the Bible is radical. That's why some people say that we are an extremist. Because the gospel, it doesn't have a great, great spot there. Or you obey or you disobey. There is nothing in between. And this is, we know that we whole creation has been growing, gro gro growing as in the pains of children right up to the present times. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the fruitful of the Spirit Grown inwardly as way in girly for the adoption to the sonship and redemption of our bodies. Well, this is not important that we as a believer, we preach the gospel. We have many people around us just waiting for the Lord to come. I, I took my wife uh, uh, Friday to the airport. And she was excited because she's going to see her mom. Her mom will be 70, 74 years old to, today. And she was excited because she was there. And, and, and I can imagine when she was in the, in the airport waiting for, for the, the airplane to take them because she wants to see someone that she loves uh, with all the bottom of her heart. And yesterday they have a nice uh, birthday party and her mom was in tears. Happy because her mom doesn't know that my wife goes there to, to visit her. That was a nice surprise. And both of them was crying. I, I said, but you should be happy. Oh, we are. That is tear of, of happiness. That is, a, that is an encounter of the two people who showed love. Just imagine when we come to where we'll be there in heaven. If you love Jesus. If sometimes we have a special moment with him when we pray, when we got the communion, when we fasting or something, something when you are part time to be with him. Sometimes you feel a glimpse of what will be the encounter with Jesus. Your soul is jumping inside. Something happening in you. You have a nice uh, energy inside of you because you feel connected with the Lord. Now just imagine the day when you see him face to face. That was the hope that the Colossians has as a believer. That is the hope that every church that Paul went to preach, that was the same hope. One day we will see the Lord. And that is one of the characteristics to make us a believer, a Christians, those who believe in the resurrections. Love the Lord, love others, preach, uh, preach the gospel, and have hope and resurrections. First John, different apostle, is not Paul, but he says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope and he imputed himself, yes, as he is pure. Now, that hope that we have to see Jesus make us to make the commitment to live a pure life for the Lord. We want to 
be pure, just like the bride came to the altar for his groom. He's expecting fidelity. He's expecting commitment. He's expecting full fitness of faith and the person who loves. That was the resurrections, our faith, and our love in the Lord make us to our lives to commit to live in holiness to the Lord, trying to be pure for Him. Persevere. Make a decision every single day. Those decisions who honor Him. And remember the number important is to share the gospel. That was say verse 6. You have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world. Just as it has been doing among you since the day you hear and truly understood God's grace. That message that somebody knock at your heart, knock at your door and give it the message of Jesus that they change your life. I think it, we don't like to dwell with the past, but sometimes we need to stop and just thinking about the day that we knew the Lord, that we received him as a, as a Lord. What happened to you? How do you feel? Or well, the day that the Lord called you to serve him in anything inside of the church. I remember when the Lord called me to do my first assignment in church. To be a, a elder of the church. I was uh, 30 years old. And I was not live a life with... I have to be proud. I would say that I was Christian, but I didn't live a life where I can say, oh, I am a proud Christian. But when I had that encounter with the Lord, and, and after being in church for, for a while, they called me to serve as an elder. And that day, in that altar, I cried and cried and cried and cried like a river. They give me a, 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 a handkerchief, and I do it like this. And all my tears go there because I knew that day that I did not deserve to serve the Lord. I wasn't good, good enough to serve the Lord. But he called me because he loved me. And I understand that day, if I want to keep my life in connection with him, I had to remember that day when we, he called me. And he made me understand that he loved me, that he wants me just the same way that he loved any other sinner in their life. And they need the same opportunity that I have. And that day I understood that I can keep that happiness just for me. I need to share to others and bring them to the same opportunity to love the Lord and serve the Lord. Yes, like he gave it to me through his message. Because we believe in Jesus. We believe in him. We heard his message of truth and that truth changed our life forever. That message, that word became flesh. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God, but the one, the only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with his Father, with the Father, has made him know. If we love the Lord, and we love our neighbor, if we love 
our community. We should not keep in silence. We should share the gospel because the gospel make people know God and the first person and the first relationship. Don't take away that opportunity to anybody. Don't take away the opportunity to meet the real God to anyone. Second Corinthians chapter 4, 13, 14 says, said this, it is written, I believe therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. I believe, therefore I have spoken. If we are a Christian church, we must spread the gospel. We should not keep silent. Otherwise, we become like another religion, another museum, another place where people go and just laugh a little bit and feel good and go back home and feel miserable. We are a place where the presence of God is here constantly. It, it continues constantly because when you get out from that door, the presence of God continues in you because you love him, because you love your neighbor, because you preach the gospel, and because you believe that he's coming back. That are the characteristics to make us different, to make us a Christian church. Of course, there is people who are not agree with that definition. That will be people who are not agree with that definition because they can say, oh, pastor, that is, that is not possible that only Jesus Christ can be the way to get to God. There is many other ways that we can get there. Well, you can keep believing that and we can see you at the end of the days because this is what Jesus just said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, we say no one, comes to the Father except through me. It's not to anything, anything or anybody else, just through Jesus Christ. If we live our life and as a good Christians, other people must see us in consistency in the way that we believe and the way that we live. They don't see discrepancies. They say, well, what he speaks, that's what he does. What he believes, and what he did. If we do the virtuous stuff by the Apostle Paul, may also be visible, visible in each of us, in our church, Real Connection Church. If we're doing that, people start noticing that here is a Christian church. It's not about numbers, but we like to be numbers here, isn't it? We want to see all those uh, 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 church. Uh, uh, Empty chair with people? Yes, we want to. But it's not about that. It's about love him, love others, spread the gospel, and make people responsible for their future. Your decision is not your the decision is from them. Who wants to believe in him? But we have a job to do. What will be the job? Oh, I can hear you. Oh, one more time. It looks look like I have to go back to school. Okay, what we have to do? Share the gospel. Continue loving God. Continue loving your neighbors. Be consistent in what you say and what you believe with what you do. Otherwise, people don't believe in our message because they don't see that we live differently than others who doesn't know the Lord. And remember the Colossians, the Thessalonians, their new travel miles and miles and miles to Paul in Rome, and he was happy with those believers. And he started writing the letter. Oh, I am happy for you. Let's read our Bible verse for today. One, two, three. We always... When we pray for you, because 
and the love that you have for all God. <laughs>